This is all in the freezer. This is getting cold. Right. So this isn't on your shelf. Here's an extra special bonus. Order within the next 60 minutes. In Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola. A paradox. Walked out, look, I can't even read. And under 15 minute recipe. Chocolate. For a lot of us, coffee is an essential part of our day. We drink it in the morning and sometimes maybe even at night if it's required. But, you know, everyone likes to have a cup of coffee with a dessert of some kind, usually baked bread or some cake. But what if you could take the two and combine them together? Well, today we're going to make an espresso cake and we're going to explore some different ways that growing coffee can be sustainable while we do it. So, let's go. All right, so to make this cake, the first thing you're going to need is a coffee of your choice. It can be an espresso roast or it can be any other type of coffee, but just something you enjoy. You're also going to need one cup of flour. You're going to need a cup of raw cane sugar. This can be substituted for regular sugar, but I recommend going with raw cane sugar. You're going to need a third cup of cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. You're going to need a fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And that generally completes the dry ingredients. And next thing we're going to be looking at are the wet ingredients. You're going to need three egg whites. And uh, in the spirit of sustainability, I guess I might go to my backyard and uh, get some eggs. If you just have a container of egg whites that are pre-separated, uh, generally works out to about two-thirds of a cup of egg whites. You're also going to need a pinch of salt and uh, some vanilla extract for flavor. And then finally, uh, one cup of applesauce. And with that, you have the ingredients. So the coffee that I'm using in this recipe is an Italian espresso roast. It's from a local roaster here in Gainesville. And the reason why I chose this coffee for the video is because uh, it contains lots of interesting terms on the label that open up discussions about sustainability and coffee growing. First, I want to talk about what it means for coffee to be shade grown. The one region of the world where coffee grows, this is known as uh, the coffee belt, uh, coffee can be grown in a couple of conventional ways. There's the sun-grown coffee and shade-grown coffee. And the difference between the two is that shade-grown coffee is usually pl placed in, in between different types of uh, plants and uh, with a greater biodiversity present, and it also takes longer to cultivate, meaning that you know the resilience of an ecosystem is preserved in the process of growing it. And you can actually see that in shade-grown systems there is a greater success in sequestering carbon, as well as maintaining the resilience uh, and fertility of the soil that uh, you're farming your coffee on. So there are actually benefits to using shade-grown systems that uh, have more to do with the flavor of your coffee in the end, simply because uh, of the quality of your soil than you might realize. Growing is only one part of the process and there's a lot to be said about the sustainability of the intermediate processing steps of coffee uh, to get us to where we can consume the product. So what we actually drink is a roasted version of the inner core of these coffee fruits uh, known as a coffee bean and to remove the fruit from the outside you need to uh, perform a process known as pulping, and uh, the difference between natural pulping and machine done pulping is simply just that natural pulping uh, isn't done with a machine. A machine typically requires a lot of water input, uh, whereas natural pulping uh, doesn't. And then after it's dried and shipped away, it can be roasted uh, in the place of sale. And that brings us to our final product in the coffee food system. Now, when you look at the intermediate steps of uh, getting coffee from you know, the fields 
uh, to being processed and then sent off to a country to be roasted. There's a lot to be said about the water usage of the pulping process. And so uh, the coffee that I have with me for this recipe is actually naturally pulped. And so this is uh, utilizing pulping practices which have a lower water input than a lot of industrial methods or a lot of machine methods. Um, and one of the big concerns about this, uh, about industrial or you know machine pulping is that it has a high water input and there's not really a reliable way to reclaim the water after it's been used in that process. And so uh, when looking at ways in which you can strengthen communities that grow coffee, uh, one way is to potentially offer ways to uh, reclaim that water from the pulping process if they do machine pulping. The coffee that I'm using is Fairtrade certified, uh, Rainforest Alliance certified, as well as Smithsonian Bird Friendly certified. Let's start by making this cup of coffee. So I'm going to use a mocha pot to make this coffee. You can use a drip brew or pour over to make it however you think it would be best, but uh, I like the mocha pot for this particular kind of coffee. And you're just going to want to grind it up into a fine, uh, as fine of a grind as you can, and then uh, if you're using a mocha pot, go ahead and get ready to assemble the pot with the coffee grounds in it uh, to make the espresso. I always start out with boiling water first uh, for two reasons. One, you know, it makes it so that uh, the coffee's not sitting on the stovetop for very long uh, so that, you know, it doesn't get burned by heating up with the water. And also you get your coffee much faster. So it's a pretty great you know, tip to start with boiling water instead of cold water. Uh, you're going to want to insert the coffee filter inside of the boiling water tank and then screw on the top chamber where all the coffee will uh, eventually come out and be stored in. And then once you've tightened everything down nice and snug, uh, go ahead and move it over to the stovetop and turn it on. And if you started with boiling water, it should be only uh, slightly less than a minute before you see any sort of activity. And you'll know it's happening uh, probably by the sound before the site because, uh, well, you'll you know hear coffee spraying out the sides and uh, probably want to make sure that that lid is down so that you don't lose any and it doesn't get everywhere. Once it's been brewing for about 10 to 15 seconds, you're going to want to turn off the heat uh, and then bring the mocha pot over to the sink and wash the bottom part in cold water to stop the coffee from brewing upwards. Uh, this will leave all of the coffee in the top chamber cooling down so that you can move on to the next part of the recipe and get it when you need it. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees and we're going to get started mixing together the dry ingredients. You're going to want to get an empty bowl and then combine the flour, the sugar, and the cocoa powder along with the baking soda and baking powder all in one bowl. Uh, and then you're going to want to take a whisk and sort of whisk everything together, add a pinch of salt. Uh, if you think that it's, you know, to taste or you think that it's necessary, I always like to add a little bit of it to make everything sort of blend together. And then uh, just take, yeah, a dry whisk and sort of whisk everything until it looks one even color. That's how you know it's mixed together. If it's one even color and it doesn't have any clumps in it, it's pretty much done. So go ahead and set those dry ingredients aside and get a new bowl to mix the wet ingredients in. We're going to want to take our eggs and separate out the egg whites. And remember, after you've done this, uh, try not to throw those eggshells away if you have a compost available because eggshells make great compost materials. So it's worth remembering uh, that when you're making this. Also, now would be a good time to add the vanilla extract as well as the applesauce. So scoop that in there. And then finally, get your coffee and pour it in and stir the entire mixture together until everything is totally combined and uh, looks good. Then you're just going to want to take the dry mixture and the wet mixture and slowly integrate the two to make a cake batter. And this can take a while depending uh, if you have an electric mixer or not, but you know you generally want to get all the clumps out and make sure you have an even, consistent mixture. Okay, so now we're going to find the nearest cake pan. It could be a 9-inch cake pan or whatever you have lying around. You're just going to want to coat it in some non-stick oil. And then uh, go ahead and toss some cocoa powder on the inside if you want. This is a great step to... Uh, loosen the sides of the cake from the pan. It makes it easier to get out when it's done. And then just pour the batter right on top. Make sure to fill everything evenly. Try to get as much of it as you can. This recipe is pretty exact. Uh, and you're just going to want to throw it into the oven. It really is that simple. And uh, bake it for 20 to 25 minutes. Checking it periodically with a toothpick to make sure that everything has been cooked all the way through. And if you did everything right, this is what you should get on the other end. Uh, notice that actually the only thing I had around was a chopstick, and so the result of using that instead of a toothpick can be found in the uh, bottom left there. But I'm just going to try and cover it up with some powdered sugar. Of course, if you have uh, you know, non-fat yogurt or any sort of sliced fruit that you might think 
uh, would be good with this, then you know, feel free to add it. This is really a flexible recipe. It's a wonderful treat with an even more wonderful drink to go along with it. And it's almost kind of sad to think that in the very near future it may be such that uh, you know, coffee is not so easy to come by because of the effects of climate change. Because of where coffee grows in the world, the coffee belt, uh, which is an equatorial region, the fact of the matter is, is that climate change is going to have an especially adverse effect to the people who, who make their living uh, farming there and also to the agroecosystems in which the plants are farmed. Uh, in these regions, and this goes for other commodities that are found, you know, in this recipe, such as cocoa powder. So, in order to preserve a lot of these excellent recipes and things for people to try, we got to have an honest and open discussion about the sustainability of not just our farming practices, but other things as well, uh, and how they affect our ability to, you know, maintain farming these things and maintain producing these things. So. Uh, make sure to continue spreading awareness about uh, sustainable farming systems and also uh, spreading awareness about how it may very well affect your ability to get your morning cup of coffee. So there you have it, a delicious recipe for these upcoming holidays and hopefully for many holidays afterwards. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe. I'm not going to make any more of these, but it might be nice anyway. Aroma than any other kind. Their life.